As we close out our celebration of Black History Month, Carrie Saldo talks with baseball historian Daron Goldman about the history of Negro League Baseball, as well as Major League Baseball Hall of Fame player Monty Irvin, who made the jump from the Negro Leagues to the Major Leagues and would have celebrated his 100th birthday this year. What I discovered was um, I was doing research on World War II and uh, something called the Double Victory Campaign, which swept black America and has been credited as having something to do with uh, the process of baseball integration. And I knew somebody who had connections with Monty, and Monty had served in World War II, um, so I interviewed him over the phone. And that then eventually I had a chance to meet him. And, and then, you know, like it often is, when you first hear about somebody, then you dig in a little bit and you find out, wow, I had known about him, but I didn't realize just what a pioneer he was. And when I really found out that he was the guy that many people originally thought should have been the person to integrate baseball in, in the late 1940s, that became, made him even more intriguing. Yeah, to that point, why was it that he wasn't the person? Because, you know, Jackie Robinson is the name that we all know as the man who integrated baseball. Because um, Monty went essentially to, world, to Europe for World War II in 1943. He was away for two years, and he suffered from it. He came back with an inner ear problem and, and some degree of shell shock. So he really wasn't ready in 1945. Meanwhile, Jackie Robinson had served in World War II as well. He had been honorably discharged. He then played in the Negro Leagues briefly in 1945 and was available when Branch Rickey, the then general manager and part owner of the Dodgers, decided the time had come. And so he then went ahead and talked to Jackie. He did actually apparently talked to Monty that year as well. And Monty came home from the war around September of 1945, when Jackie had actually already been signed, but it had not been announced. And Monty told Branch Rickey and other Dodger officials, I'm not ready. Hmm. So really interesting that he decided to, even though he could have taken on this historic role, decided to let someone else step up and take it. Yeah, I guess I would say, again, I think Jackie was going to be first, but Monty could have been right alongside him. So he could have been maybe right afterwards, or even perhaps he could have got to the majors first, but he ended up not getting to the majors until 1949, two years after Jackie did. And he did eventually, as you point out, your yes. research, he was the ninth person Correct. to join the major leagues. And at that point, he would have been 30 years old, which mm -hmm. I think by today's standards in baseball seems a bit old. And it was by then, those was standards it really? too. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. what, how, so how did he fit into the majors at that point? Uh, his first year, he didn't actually do terribly well. He only batted 224 and hit no home runs in 36 games. And he went back to the minor leagues in 1950. And this is when he had a rampage in the minor leagues. And his first 18 games of the 1950 season playing for the Jersey City Giants, he went wild. He hit 10 home runs in 18 games and, you know, basically by his play, demanded that they bring him up. And then he was 31, and that's when he really made his impact. And at that point, he became a major league star. Because he joined the New York Giants at Correct. that point, right? And yeah. in the famous outfield of all African-American players. Right. Talk about the legacy of that outfield. Well, that outfield happened almost by accident um, in 1951. Uh, Leo DeRocher, who was then the manager of the Giants, was maneuvering players. He was a pretty masterful manager, and he moved, maneuvered them around. So for the World Series, he ended up putting... Um, Hank Thompson and Monty Irvin and the great Willie Mays, and Monty was Willie's uh, roommate and mentor, um, in the outfield together for the World Series, and that had never happened before. Yeah, and while sort of Robinson and Irvin have these parallel tracks, they both would be 100 this year. Correct. Uh, they both played these very sort of integral roles in the part of Major League Baseball. For Irvin's part, he was more of a behind-the-scenes guy, and you mentioned it briefly, but talk a little bit more about how he mentored some of the other players. Well, he, um, when Willie Mays came up, he was not yet 20 years old, and Monty was the first player he met, and he got put with Willie. And Willie has said, when Monty died uh, three years ago, he said Monty was like a second father to him. Monty was the guy, he, Willie talked about how Monty knew when Willie felt stressed, even when Willie didn't say he was. Monty knew when to give him encouragement, when to push him, and when to ease back. He said Monty was as wise and generous as tough as, and, and as tough as they come. Wow. And so for, for his part this year, Jackie Robinson will be celebrated by Major League Baseball. It was recently announced this entire season during his what would be his 100th birthday will be dedicated to him. Right. Do you think that Major League Baseball is, is making a misstep here by not also celebrating Irvin, who would be hitting that same milestone? I think and I hope he will get some attention. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I think that they should celebrate him. I mean, I recognize, and I think it's fair to say that Jackie was the groundbreaker, but Monty uh, was the guy who mentored so many different players. Uh, another uh, early African-American named Brooks Lawrence said that Monty was, the, the black players looked to Monty for support, not Jackie. So I feel like it's, it's a theme in our culture that the person who's first, the person who wins gets all the attention, and I think Monty should also get attention for the role he played. And Jackie Robinson passed away much younger in life. He was 52, I think, when he passed away. Right. Where Monty Irvin lived to be... Almost 97. In, he died in 2016. Correct. Did he talk about the state of the game as he saw it evolving through the years? Did he talk about diversity at all or the sure. lack thereof? all those things. What did he say? Um, you know, he was one of those people that felt like, you know, progress is made if you don't... Um, you know, that being controversial didn't necessarily contribute, but being part of the scene was important. So he would talk very openly about racism, and he felt there was some racism in baseball, but he also felt, he often talked about how his New York Giants team, teammates uh, uh, accepted him readily, and he became, uh, uh, you know, friendly with, with many of them. Uh, he worked in the commissioner's office in the 60s and 70s and 80s, so I think he worked more behind the scenes to try to make change. And then once he retired from baseball, he went on, as you explained to me previously, to be a commentator and have some other roles. What did he do to stay connected to the game even though he wasn't on the field? He was the chair of the Veterans Committee that um, decided on most of the first Negro League players to get into the Hall of Fame. So he helped shepherd their passage. Um, he wrote an autobiography talking about the Negro Leagues. He, um, he was interviewed by almost everybody. He was just such, I met him in, when he was 94, and he was just so welcoming. He just made himself available. So everybody quoted him, everybody spoke to him. Um, he uh, wrote introductions for all sorts of books, books on the Negro Leagues, on black players. He was kind of a griot of the game, along with uh, Buck O'Neill. I think mm. Monty was similar. What do you think that he would think about the diversity rates in baseball? Relatively low, if you think about 70 years of African Americans in playing in the major leagues, it still hovers around 7%. Right. Um, you know, I think he would think that it's unfortunate that it's dipped this low, and, and uh, I didn't actually have a chance to talk directly to to him about it, but my guess is he would say, you know, baseball needs to do more. And I think the Jackie Robinson initiative is baseball's attempt this year to draw more attention to the issue, but I think it's a very hard thing to change. And I think it's also kind of a public relations thing that baseball is doing.